Hello, you've got the Rogue Light Rider. Now, I haven't made a video in a while, but I got some stuff I'll be doing. One of the things I did is, I, uh, in my last video you saw I got the uh, painted interfering, and hey, it looks okay with the stock gauges and stuff, but I'm going to get the CDO style gauges, and I'm gonna put those in there. I'll show you how easy it is to do that. Gauges. You can get used ones from eBay, but I got the new ones from the Harley Davidson. So I'm going to put them in, and uh, you're going to see how easy it is to do it. So let's get it done. Now, as you can see, with the painted interfering, those white gauges just don't seem to set it off. So uh, I'm going to put the uh, CVO style gauges in there. Let's take a look at them. Now, these are the CVO gauges I got from Harley Davidson. It's going to look so much better than those white faces with the uh, painted interfering. So let's get the uh, interfering off. I should say let's get the outer fairing off and the gauge cluster apart so we can start putting this stuff in. I'll show you how easy it is to do that. Now the easy way to get this off, turn, take the cover off right here, little tab, push it underneath there and get it off. Now. And then pull it out. Be careful with it because there's a little tab on the bottom of it. You can see right here. A little tab right here on the bottom of it. Now I'm very bad about getting it off, so consequently, I've had an extra one here because guess what I did? I broke it off. So I had another one already. I didn't get it from Harley Davidson. I found it on eBay. Real cheap that way. They're inexpensive that way. You try to get it from Harley, it costs an arm and a leg. And of course, if I turn this this way, you can just take it to two screws, one on each side. T25. Unplug the uh, instrument cluster. Unplug the switches. Now, I've got switches in mine, so therefore it's easier to get to. Just unplug them, and the whole thing just lifts right off. Makes it easy to get to. And then, this is held on. Also, I do believe, by T25s. So we'll get that switched out. As you can see, three T25s, it comes right out. Now, let's get this prepared to go in there. Now, you notice I put a towel down to help protect the uh, paint. Also, put a towel over my gas tank. It's always good to put a towel over your painted items to make sure nothing accidents happen. Don't get the paint scratched. Easier to take a rag and wash a rag than to try to paint something again. So let's get it in. Now, one thing I did notice when I started to try to switch it out, this has got a little thing on the top of the gauge to use to help hold it in place. So make sure you take those off and put them on the new gauges. Now what I did is I took and I put them in the housing and then I can take this and just mount them on there. That way they're lined up straight. Make sure you do that to make sure things come out straight. There we go. I got them mounted in there right. Now make sure before you tighten the screws down that these are lined up properly. Because even though I put them in before I put the gauges in, this side is just slightly off. So with the screws just started, I was able to shift this around to get it in there and get it centered before I tightened everything down. And they, they turned out real good. Now let's get the get this back together and then we'll get the fairing off and put the fuel gauge and voltmeter in there. Now as you can see, it's really tight getting in there to get to this gauge. Gauge is the front. What you have to do. Of course, take your fairing off, take your headlight out, then you have to take this vent. There's only, basically, there's only two screws holding it. There's one T20 right here. You can see it with my finger here. There it is right up in there. And then there's another T20 that is up in here. Right up in here. Right there. Right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see where I'm fingering. There it is, right there. And they come out. Now, if you have the later model one, 
that doesn't have the vents in there. Just a tube. It's real easy. Like I said, one screw is here. The other screw is right here. Now, when you're putting in this right back here in the back, that's just a locator pin. It's up inside there. Real easy to get out. Once you get it out, you can actually look up here. Let me get my flashlight and I'll show you. Look up in here. Try to get in so you see it. And there are the gauges. It's up in there. Now, there are three screws holding it in. Two on the top here and one on the bottom. They're T20s. They're fairly difficult to get to, but you can get to them by taking the vent out and getting through the screws there. Now, when you get the gauge out, this is what it looks like. This is just pressed on there. It just pops right off. It just puts right off. It's not screwed on. You gotta be careful because the plug has a little clip right here. Use a flat blade to pull it out and I pull it out right here with it inside here. I went through the top here, got the screws out, got these two screws out. Take more time because you can't read anything. But the bottom screw, you can come in from where the vent is and just unscrew it really good. How it guard drops out. That then you can pull the gauge around and pop the you find it. Here it is. This is the plug for it. It plugs in. I had to use two suit hands to pop this out, but then this just pulls, lifts right off. No problem. Now, the silver ring here clips into this. So you put your gauge, the new gauge, right here. Put the new gauge in there, and then press get the this is just sticking on there just the double side just with a little cushy tape comes right off right and then that goes and the little clips in here it looks like there's screw holes in it but that's not screw holes that does not line up with the screws that hold this in the little tabs are what line up with these right here. You put the gauge in. So let's get the gauge together. Now, the gauge will only go in this one way. It's got a little knot here that goes this right here. It just slides right in there and just slides in there. Now this, like I said, little, little foam on there, it goes in here and that's what clips in these little holes, these clippers right here. That's what holds it in. That's all it does, it just clips in. Clip, clip, clip. Now, you see there the holes are. That's not for the screws. That's just there. And of course, then you got the, the three mounting press to mount in. And it plugs in. And it just goes right in, real easy. So let's put it back in. Now, it's all back together. Leads are in the rear and right spots now. Vents are back in there, headlights back in there, and there the gauges are all plugged in. You get the fairing together, and I'll show you what it looks like with the finished product. Okay, let's turn it on and see how they look. You ready? Well, I think it looks real good against the uh, painted inner fairing. So, we'll see how it looks like. Turn the lights out and see how it looks like the lights off. Now, what I had to do is I had to cover my headlight up because it was really making everything bright. But, wow, I think it makes a heck of a difference. It looks so much better. Anyway, that's just uh, one little thing I did to my rug glide. You can do it to yours. If you want to change the gauges, change the entire look of the instruments. They're easy to do. And it says in the instructions, you got to take the 
bike down, have the odometer radio set up. I turn it on. It, it's reading the uh, updated mileage. Now the odometer, of course, reset to zero, but the actual complete mileage of the bike, it's there. It's showing. So you ain't gonna worry about that. Uh, so it might seem like it's a little bit to do, but just think how much money I save by doing it myself and not taking it to the dealer. It's uh, dealer's gonna charge you. Probably take the speakers out and everything else. But uh, just by taking the vents out, you usually have to get to the uh, screws and take the gauges out on the inside. The speedometer, tachometer, that, that, that's super easy to do. The uh, most you got to do though is take the fairing off, take the headlight out, take the uh, vents out, and you can get up there to the uh, gauges, change them over. Fairly simple. So, if you uh, like my videos, uh, subscribe it helps uh youtube with their algorithms i guess i'm not monetized they call it i don't make money from this i just do it because hey i like sharing knowledge of what to do uh i'm probably going to go down and uh test ride the new 2024s uh i doubt very seriously i'm going to get one i don't like the uh, wet heads 2023 is going to be the last year you can get air cooled motors because the uh, 2024s, the Road Glide and the Street Glide, they're wet heads. Everything's a wet head now on the Touring Miles. So, if you want air-cooled, if you want to get a new one, there's still got some 2023s on the floor. You can still get a new one. But from now on, any of the air-cooled Touring Miles, they're going to be used. So, you ain't going to get new ones unless you go down and get one of the 2023s now. I'm glad I got a 2021. I'm having good fun with it. So, uh, subscribe, like the video, please. It helps me, uh, helps YouTube know that, uh, what I do is something worth something. And, uh, I'll see you on the road. Matter of fact, I'm going down next month to the, uh, Forgotten Angels camp out in, uh, March of 2024 down in Florida. It's going to be fun. So, uh, we'll, and then in, uh, June, I'm going to travel and tall. I'm going to go to his uh, Run for the Hills. The Run for the Hills, I think it's four. But uh, it's in Chattanooga. It's the uh, 6th and 7th of June, I do believe it is. That's a great ride up to the Smoky Mountains. Hey, join us. You can look at YouTube up on the YouTube. Uh, Traveling Tall up on YouTube. It's, he's got a good channel. He covers a lot of good stuff. And, uh, hey, also, you can look up Shade Tree Army channel here on YouTube. Different stuff. So, I'll see you later. See you on the road.